the cerebral uh, hemispheres they are extensively developed in man so they are in order to fit into the rigid cranial cavity these cerebral hemispheres they undergo convolutions and these convolutions they are separated by means of fissures these convolutions which are elevated those are referred to as the gyri and uh, the fissures which separate these convolutions or the gyri we are referring to them as the sulci so today in uh, today's uh, video we are going to discuss about the various sulci and gyri which are present on the superolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere so all of you are aware that the cerebral uh, each cerebral hemisphere it has got a superolateral surface it has got a medial surface and it has got a inferior surface so in this video we are extensively discussing about the sulci and gyri which are present on the superolateral surface so uh, because of the presence of these uh, convolutions so the brain in man is referred to as gyrin cephalic but uh, whereas if you have a look at the cerebral hemispheres in case of lower mammals reptiles and birds it is smooth it is not convoluted so that kind of cerebral hemisphere it is referred to as lysencephalic so in man it is gyrin cephalic because of the presence of the different gyri so uh, uh, today we are going to discuss about the various sulci and gyri which are present on the superolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere now this superolateral surface it is present in between the uh, superomedial border and inferolateral border of the cerebral hemisphere so in order to divide the cerebral hemisphere into lobes we uh, take into account the fairly constant sulci so that means these uh, if you have a look at all the brains these are constant in position so those uh, sulci are uh, central sulcus that is the central sulcus and lateral sulcus and then we take into account the parietro occipital sulcus so this uh, central sulcus lateral sulcus and parieto occipital sulcus and uh, you have got a notch pre occipital notch which is present uh, about 3 cm from the occipital bone so you draw an imaginary line drawing uh, joining the parieto occipital sulcus to the pre occipital notch and uh, one more imaginary line uh, which joins the posterior uh, ramus of the lateral sulcus with the first imaginary line so the part in front of the central sulcus we are referring it as to the frontal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere and the part behind the central sulcus and the parieto occipital sulcus and the second imaginary line is the parietal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere and the part below the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and uh, in between the second and first imaginary line in front of the preoccipital notch is the temporal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere and the part of the cerebral hemisphere which is located behind the parieto occipital sulcus and the first imaginary line is called as the occipital lobe so coming to the functions of the each lobe uh, mainly the frontal lobe which is there so in front of the central sulcus so the pre central sulc uh, pre central gyrus which is there it is mostly related to the motor activity all the motor fibers will arise from here and the frontal lobe which is there it is related with the emotional behavior judgment and uh, it is related to the frontal i feel now if you have a look at the parietal lobe the post central gyrus which is there in the parietal lobe it is related with all the sensations so it is the sensory cortex and uh, the remaining part of the parietal lobe it is related to all the arithmetic activities calculations and spellings and uh, the temporal lobe which is there it is mainly related to the auditory area and of course to the speaking and uh, this uh, occipital lobe it is mainly concerned with vision that is uh, the 
visual cortex is located in the occipital lobe. So these are the major functions of the each individual lobe of the cerebral hemispheres. So having a look at the superolateral surface which is present in between the supromedial border and the infralateral border. So the major sulci and gyri which are present on the superolateral surface. So first is the central sulcus. So this is the central sulcus. The central sulcus is otherwise known as uh, sulcus of Rolando. Other name is sulcus of Rolando. So how do you identify the central sulcus? It is situated just 1 cm behind the midline between the frontal and the occipital pole. So this is referred to as the frontal pole and this is referred to as the occipital pole or this is the anterior pole and posterior pole. So this central sulcus it is located just 1 cm behind the midline, midpoint between the two poles and this is uh, it indents into the medial surface as well. So if you have to identify the central sulcus so this has to cut through the supralateral surface as well as the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere and it should be located 1 cm behind the midpoint. And one more important identification feature is this should be accompanied by a precentral sulcus and a post central sulcus. If it is satisfies all these points then you identify that as the central sulcus. And uh, then the other major sulcus which is present in the superolateral surface is lateral sulcus. So the lateral sulcus actually begins in the inferior part of the cerebral hemisphere and it runs in between the temporal lobe and the orbital part of the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere. And then when, uh, so this is the stem of the lateral sulcus and then when it reaches the superolateral surface, it will divide into three rami, three branches or the three rami we call them as. So this is the anterior horizontal ramus. So this is anterior horizontal ramus which runs for about 2.5 centimeters. Then you have got a anterior ascending ramus which is again about for 2.5 centimeters. And this one which you are seeing is the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus. So this is about 7.5 centimeters. So this lateral sulcus if you see carefully it is upturning and it is ending in the inferior parietal lobule. So this is the parietal lobe and this is ending in the inferior parietal lobule after upturning. So these are the uh, parts of the lateral sulcus. So this point where the three rami are diverging this point is referred to as the Sylvian point and this sulcus is referred to as the Sylvian sulcus. So this is the another major sulcus which you see in the supralateral surface. Then the other one which we see is the parieto occipital sulcus. So this parieto occipital sulcus it actually begins in the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere and then it begins in the midpoint of the calcarine sulcus and then it ascends upwards and backwards and then it turns to cut through the superolateral surface. So you see only a part of it in the superolateral surface. So this is present almost 5 centimeters from the posterior pole. So if you have a look at the cerebral hemisphere in the uh, visora, if you have a look at it in the brain, so it is located exactly 5 centimeters from the posterior pole. So that is the parieto occipital sulcus. So these are the major sulci which are present on the uh, superolateral surface. So apart from this we have got the lateral occipital sulcus, lunate sulcus and uh, post calcarine sulcus and interparietal sulcus, superior and inferior frontal sulcus and superior and inferior temporal sulcus. So individual uh, lobes again they are divided into lobules by these sulcus. So the major sulci the uh, ones are central sulcus, lateral sulcus, parieto occipital sulcus and the preoccipital notch. Now we will have the look at the minor sulci in each lobe which will divide it into again lobules. So if we have a look at the 
frontal lobe so this is the frontal lobe so the part of the uh, cerebral hemisphere which is present in front of the central sulcus is being referred to as the frontal lobe so in front of the central sulcus you are having one more sulcus which runs parallel to that that is called as the pre central sulcus so the part in between the central sulcus and the pre central sulcus is referred to as the pre central lobe pre central lobule okay and then the remaining part of the frontal lobe which is there it is again divided by means of two sulci so that is the superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus so this will divide the remaining part of the frontal lobe except the anterior most part into superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus and inferior frontal gyrus so uh, it is again divisible into three different gyri now the part in uh, anterior part of the frontal lobe which is not being divided by the sulci it is referred to as the prefrontal gyrus so this is the one which is responsible for all your emotional behavior your thinking your judgment and all is based on this this prefrontal gyrus so those are the different gyri and sulci which are present in the frontal lobe now let's have a look at the parietal lobe so in the parietal lobe behind the central sulcus you have got post central sulcus so post central sulcus which will run parallel to the central sulcus and uh, so the part of the cerebral cortex in between the central sulcus and the post central sulcus is referred to as the post central gyrus and the remaining part of the parietal lobe it is divided by a interparietal sulcus interparietal sulcus into a superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule now if you just have a look at this inferior parietal lobule i told you the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus will upturn and it will end in the inferior parietal lobule so similar way the superior temporal sulcus also is upturning and it is ending in the inferior parietal lobule so this part of the parietal lobule which is uh, in relation with the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus it is called as supramarginal gyrus so it is called as supramarginal gyrus so this part is supramarginal gyrus and this part which of the inferior parietal lobule which is surrounding the superior temporal sulcus is called as angular gyrus angular gyrus and this part which is there the remaining part which is in relation to the inferior temporal sulcus so this is called as arcus parait uh, temporoparietalis so this is the third part arcus temporoparietal so supramarginal gyrus angular gyrus and arcus uh, parieto temporalis so these are the three lobules which are present in the inferior parietal lobule now if we have a look at the temporal lobe so the temporal lobe is present below the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus and uh, you know, below the second imaginary line and in front of the first imaginary line in front of the preoccipital notch so this uh, temporal lobe again it is divisible uh, into uh, different gyri by the presence of the superior temporal sulcus and the inferior temporal sulcus so the part above the superior temporal sulcus is referred to as the superior temporal gyrus and in between the superior and inferior temporal sulci you have got the middle temporal gyrus and below the inferior temporal gyrus we have got the inferior temporal gyrus so this uh, temporal lobe it is related to the audition the hearing so the auditory area is located over here so we will see that in the next video next coming to the occipital lobe so this occipital lobe it is divisible by a lateral occipital sulcus into a superior occipital uh, lobe and uh, lobule and a inferior occipital lobule and uh, you can see a c shaped lunate sulcus and uh, the calcarine sulcus which is present on the 
medial side will cut through the uh, suprolateral surface of the uh, uh, cerebral hemisphere and this will present as the post calcarine surface. So this occipital lobe it is mainly related to the vision. So the visual cortex is located in the occipital lobe. So uh, in my next video we will have a look at the different uh, functional areas of the suprolateral surface.